Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So today what I want to talk to you about is how to listen to the reality of a situation rather than what you want it to be. And also how the subconscious sort of plays into that and how the subconscious can kind of trick you into staying in a situation longer than is actually healthy for you to do that. So first of all, what I want to do is clarify what reality is. Reality is the facts. It's the things as they happen, not the story about what is happening. The thing that I can share with you that will explain the best what I'm talking about is some of my past relationships. <laughs> so quite often I, I'm quite empathic and I understand people. I also tend to be able to, I'm sort of a grey piece person. Some people are black and white. They can see, you know, very clearly, you know, the black and white of a situation. Whereas I tend to see all sorts of different shades of grey and can see in a situation from a hundred different points of view, if not more. Um, so it makes it quite hard sometimes to step out of it and make clear, decisive decisions about some things. Not all things, and I'm getting much better than I have been. But the example I want to give you is about a relationship, oh, well, actually it could have been any one of my relationships from a long time ago, and how the behaviours of the person I knew were not conducive to a good ongoing relationship. But a number of reasons, there were a number of reasons why I held on to the relationship. Partly it was because subconsciously, the subconscious wants to keep you safe, I've said this many times before, the purpose of the subconscious to is, is to ensure your survival. And sometimes when you're making a change in your life, what you're in, even if it doesn't suit you, the subconscious knows that you are surviving it. It knows that because you are alive, even if the situation isn't conducive to a happy life. However, if you were to step out of that situation, the subconscious has no evidence of how you will survive in that. So therefore, according to the subconscious, you could potentially die. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will die or even that there's any likelihood of you dying. But the way the subconscious perceives it is that in the situation you're in at the moment, even though it's unpleasant, you are surviving it. Any situation outside of that, if you were to change anything dramatically, it doesn't know that you will survive. So therefore, it creates anxiety, fear, and self-doubt, all of these different things to try and keep you where it knows you are safe and going to survive. And what it also does is it creates these stories to make you understand things. And the stories it creates might be stories, or they were for me, about how there is a possibility that something good further along the line might happen. The person you're with might change. They might suddenly see you differently. They might start acting differently. Maybe they actually do think the things you want them to think. It's just because of things that have happened to them in the past, the reason they're acting the way they are. And all of these things that go on in your head that make a story around the reality of what's happening. The reality of what's happening are the facts. That somebody doesn't ask you how you are or really care about you that somebody treats you badly, that somebody shouts at you. And I'm not saying this specifically happened, but I'm just saying this could be the reality. That somebody would rather be going out with their friends, that somebody has no interest in you, doesn't know how to be interested in you, that somebody doesn't want to grow with you and change and work together on the relationship. You might story it in your mind, you might create a story around it that convinces you that it could be but when you leave that story aside, when you drop all the story and you look at what the facts are, that is the reality of what is. And I'm sharing this with you, A, because I'm sure most of us get stuck in these situations from time to time. I'm sharing it from a particularly from a relationship point of view, but it could be all sorts of things. It could be a job. It could be a career path. Um, I think I've had things like this happen when I've been deciding to move house in the past as well. The safety of where you are compared to where you could be going. What I've also realised, specifically pertaining to relationships and things, is a lack of communication, a lack of being able to be vulnerable and share what you're feeling and what, you, what you're thinking and also what you need for you to be in a good relationship. And it's okay to say that you need some things. Maybe you are doing that already. 
But I know that when I was younger, I found that really hard to say, actually, this is what I need. This is what I want in this relationship. And to feel like I deserved it. I was always a people pleaser. So I always put myself last and tried to make everyone else happy. And it's taken me many years to realise that the only person I can really make happy is myself. I'm not responsible for anybody else's happiness. And actually, when I'm happy, those around me tend to be more happy too. <laughs> so it's a win-win. But going back to what I was talking about with this reality, when you pare everything down and you get rid of the conversation you have about the facts and you're just left with the facts, it can be a lot easier to make a decision on what you want going forwards than if you carry on listening to all the story you're telling yourself about the facts. Because the story you tell yourself about the facts doesn't change the facts. It doesn't manipulate, well, you might manipulate them in your head, but it doesn't actually physically manipulate them. It doesn't change them. They are what they are. And as long as you stay in the story about the facts, you can't change anything. You'll keep repeating the same behaviour over and over and over again. And that's quite often why in relationships you find that you have these sort of circular kind of behavioural patterns where you kind of keep on repeating the same cycle of things and you never really seem to move forward with it. However, when you drop the story and you look at the facts and you also know how you want to experience a relationship and what you need in that relationship, you can ask yourself, is it likely that this relationship is going to change? Or isn't it likely? And that really depends on you and the person in that relationship. If you both want it to change and you're both committed to growing together and creating a relationship where you're both enjoying it, then that's absolutely amazing. But I've had relationships where the person I'm with, for whatever reasons, does not want to change. Maybe because of what I've been telling you about with the subconscious, that they feel that if they change, that they're sort of being threatened with death, <laughs> which is how the subconscious perceives it. Um, and that's understandable and that's okay. But it might mean that you have some decisions to make in regards to that relationship or that work arrangement or the, your path in life or your house or where you're living or whatever it is. But when you've pared it down and you know that you've got a choice to make, then you're living in reality and you're living in a space where you can create change in your life and create a life that you truly want to live. When you're living in the story of it, then you can't change anything. You're kind of swept into this continual cycle of hope and loss and regret and frustration and then back to hope and frustration and whatever, and it goes round and round and round. So although this is an uncomfortable topic and it's not exactly going to sort of magically change all of your situations, it'll hopefully help you to see the situation much more clearly. And remember that when you get stuck into the story about the situation and why someone might be doing it, there are a number of things to remember. First of all, any time you say why, but, or because, that's you going back into the story around the reality. Any time you find yourself complaining or gossiping with somebody about something to do with this story, then that's you being stuck in the story again and it makes you powerless. In, and you, when you find yourself doing those things, just remember that you're giving your power away. You are saying and giving your power over to the story rather than reality. When you start looking at the reality of things, that's you taking back your power. That's you realising what's at the bare bones of the situation. And although it can be frightening, it gives you control over what you decide to do next and it helps you to make the decision much more clearly. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, just so that you know some other things that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a monthly Ho'oponopono clearing session. Um, there's a link to that below in the show notes. Um, and again, if you're interested in pursuing coaching with me, or if you're interested in any of my online courses, there's links to those in the show notes below as well. Have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.